Hello friends, welcome back to Mule S Academy. In today's session, we are going to see uh, multiple scenarios. Okay, so we'll build a simple use case to you know uh, demonstrate how to import the data view library, how to use that data view library, and then you know how to mock data using that data view library, and we'll deploy it to the cloud hub and we test it. Okay, so before starting the development. I'll encourage everyone to please go ahead and subscribe the channel, hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you'll get notification to upcoming videos. And don't forget to you know explore other important content from the channel. Okay. Okay. So let's start it. So first thing you can do, you can do a setup. And in a setup, you can go ahead to access management. First, assign a proper permission to your user. Okay. So lo let's go ahead and go to your... Uh, uh, user section over here click on your user and go here and say api code builder and add this role over here any point code builder okay so if it is not there you just go ahead and click on select this add this you'll find one role assigned to your user okay so this has to be there okay Let's go back to our any point code builder and we'll build a simple uh, mule flow. So we'll start with the develop and integration option. So we'll go ahead and we'll give a proper name to our project. <clears throat> so we'll say that, you know, mock library. Okay. Select the location, project location on your machine. A very well, your code builder is deployed. Okay, let's look for a file. Okay. So let's wait for everything loaded. Project indexed, fine. Okay. First, we'll add the HTTP listener configuration. So let's wait for this. Let me reload. Something was missing. It's loading. Okay. So when we create a mule for project in Anypoint Studio, you'll see that the HTTP dependencies and the socket dependencies automatically added. Uh, in this case, we won't get those dependencies. So we need to, you know, unless you use that connector, you won't get dependencies. So we'll go ahead and we'll say, give me those. So again, control and space bar, it's loading. Just to wait for that project indexed. Now you will get uh, proper options here. So first we'll be creating HTTP listener configuration. And uh, then we'll be creating flow. And then inside that flow, we'll, we'll start uh, using. Not sure why it's taking this much time. Okay. So some background, uh, you know, stuff. Okay. So if you search for HTTP listener configuration, right? You will find it's running on local host. What I know. So this is 0.0.0, .0 and by default, it will be running on port number 8081. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get the flow. So we'll just go ahead and say, give me a flow. So the moment uh, we added this configuration, right? In the bottom, it says that dependency added successfully. Okay. Now let's go ahead and uh, look for, uh, you know, flow. Okay. So here, first thing we'll be having listener. So we'll just say HTTP 
you go ahead and search for it. In path, just give a default path as a forward slash. And here we need to select this one, either this, you update this or you go ahead and use that here. Okay, so our first listener is ready. You can see in the flow, left-hand side, our listener is ready. Okay. Okay. Now let's go ahead and, uh, you know, add a simple uh, set, uh, set payload option over here and our transform activity, whichever is fine. Okay. So we'll just go ahead and say transform with output JSON. Okay. So now here we can go ahead and edit this code. But before that, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll import the data view library. Okay, so how to do that? Control Shift P again, we'll get option and select, you know, uh, import asset from exchange. Now it will ask you what you want to import, either REST API, data view library, connectors or GraphQL API. So we'll say we want the data view library then we need to give a, a name so we have in built a data view library okay to generate random cities so i'm going to use that library itself so if you search for uh, you know uh, data generator let me search with simple let's see it comes yep Okay, so data we mock this one library. So if you double click, it will say see in the bottom dependencies successfully added to your project, project indexed. Now this library, we can use it. Okay, so now this code we don't want. Okay, so first we'll go ahead and we'll import Okay, so let me drag the code properly here so that we'll be able to see something like data view, okay? Okay, now here we'll use um, import star from I'll say, I don't want all, I want uh, random city, okay? So here we have multiple uh, random age, you know, random phone number, these options are available. So we'll go ahead and use uh, random phone number, okay? And uh, here we'll say my phone number and we can call this random phone number function okay yeah that's it let's go ahead and deploy this to our cloud app so now you note down few things so our resource path is this it will be running on uh, local host so local host is nothing but on our uh, cloud hub we'll get a proper dns url and we'll be running on 8081 okay so to run uh to deploy this code on cloud hub again control shift f and say deploy to cloud hub we can test it here also by using um, our uh, debug and run option but let's deploy to the cloud hub, okay? Now it says that in the previous sessions, I created manually. Now here we'll create automatically. So there is option called create deploy configuration file. It will create automatically that under resources folder over here, okay? So you can see that deploy.json file got created and it picks the application name properly, okay? So I give name, uh, simple name mock 
dw demo okay so let's go ahead now it, it automatically picked up the runtime uh, worker size 0 0.1 we are running on trial so we will be using uh worker only one worker so let's go ahead and deploy it now okay so again control shift f uh, p deploy to cloud hub it will try to log into any point platform and it will start deploying it okay so you can see that <clears throat> these extensions in the previous class we have already discussed all these extensions If you check the pom.xml, so this is the data library you added. We have added this dependency also. Okay. If you create this project in any point studio, you'll see that STP connector and socket connector by default available, but here it won't. Okay, so the, whenever you are using the connectors, it will add those dependencies. Let's wait for the deployment. Build successful. Let's log into any point platform. Let's go to runtime manager. Let's see. We can see that it started deploying your code. Okay. So I'll take a pause, little pause over here. Once this code is deployed, we'll resume from here. It's deployed successfully now. Let's get the URL. Let's copy this URL first, copy link address. Let's go to browser and see HTTP and yeah, that's the default path we have. You can see that my phone number. Now, every time when we trigger this, we'll get different phone number. See the random phone number. Okay. So let me recap. So we have created a uh, integration where we have imported a uh, data library from the exchange we make use of the you know uh function random phone number generator from that that library we have deployed to cloud hub and we have tested it successfully yeah that's all from this session hope you liked it thanks for watching bye bye